distrust of the Warren Commission's single gunman theory is often tied to the testimony of three self-proclaimed eyewitnesses, all claim seeing a second gunman shooting from behind the picket fence. There is Beverly Oliver. The shot that killed Pe President Kennedy didn't come from the book depository. Deaf mute Ed Hoffman. They were talking about the fact that Mr. Oswald was up in that school book, and I kept saying, no, he was not there. I saw this. I was standing here. I saw this. I saw the whole thing. And Jean Hill. They know me as the lady in red because it was the only thing in red that the cameras picked up that day. How credible are their stories? First, Miss Hill, who is standing across the street from the grassy knoll and picket fence. So I was standing right here when Kennedy's car came down, and... The shot started ringing out, and I looked up across the street, behind the picket fence up there by the tree, there in, right there in the bushes, this man was shooting with a rifle, and I saw a puff of smoke and a flash of light at the very instant that Kennedy's head exploded. Over the years, Jean's changed her story a number of times. She's a very sweet lady. Ferris Rookstool is an FBI employee by day, an assassination researcher by night. He maintains each witness's story falls apart upon close examination. But she's changed her story from saying that she said that she saw some activity in and around the picket fence. Now, back in 63, she was unable to, to put a shooter or a gunman behind the grassy knoll. Did you see the person who, who uh, fired the No, weapon? not I didn't see any person fire the weapon. You only heard it? I only heard it. Just as the president became, came right even with us, we looked at him, and he was looking at a dog in the middle of the seat. There was no dog. It's now suggested Miss Hill may have mistaken flowers in a limousine for animal. This has caused her the source of a lot of embarrassment. Yet at the same time, Jean Hill has stated some half a block away to a block away, she stated that in fact she saw a man running at a high rate of speed, which she is able to identify as a man resembling Jack Ruby. How about Ed Hoffman and his story? Over here on Stemmons Freeway was where Edward Hoffman parked his car got out of it to watch the presidential motorcade. And as he looked back over here towards the school book depository, of course, the trees weren't as full in 1963. This is where he said he saw some activity happening around the picket fence area. As you can clearly see, it's some 200 yards between freeway and over there near the uh, concrete colonnades and picket fence area. Mr. Hoffman, with the help of an interpreter, recalls what he saw. And I happened to see uh, someone fire a rifle and, it, and I was absolutely stunned and then I saw the person run back this way. Ed Hoffman went to the FBI in 1967 some four years after the assassination and first reported seeing some sort of activity near the picket fence. Two hours later he went back to the FBI and claimed that he was not able to see any activity near the uh, picket fence as his view was obstructed by the fence. It was very clear to me what I saw and you know I can't lie to what I saw you know, this is really important. We were talking about the death of a president of the United States. Mr. Hoffman's own father in 1967 said that he found his son's story to be incredible. He said his son had made up things in the past and he found, uh, found his son not to be a very credible witness. To the right of Gene Hill, we see a, uh, a figure that's been identified as the Babushka lady, simply because this lady was wearing a scarf wrapped around her head. Today, we have a person who claims to be the Babushka lady a lady by the name of Beverly Oliver. I was standing just behind Gene Hill with a movie camera. The shot that killed Pe President Kennedy didn't come from the book depository. It came from behind that picket fence. 30 Oliver says her film might show a gunman behind the picket fence. The problem is that no one has appeared who has seen the film. I didn't go back to work until Monday night, at which time there was two men waiting on the landing of the stairwell at the Colony Club. One of them identified himself as an FBI agent by the name of Regis Kennedy, and he took my film and has never been seen since. Beverly is the only person that can place herself here in Dealey Plaza at the time of the assassination. And she did not surface until some 1969, 1970, some five years, six years after the assassination. There are substantial problems with her story, uh, among them. Gerald Posner has investigated evidence new and old for his book, she tells Case story. Closed. She says that she was taking her pictures that day with a Yashica Super 8 Zoom movie camera. Turns out that after she first told her story, somebody looked that up, and that camera didn't exist in 1963. Wasn't manufactured until 1968. She says she was 17 or 19 years old. The Babushka lady appears middle-aged. The Babushka lady is heavy. There are pictures of Beverly Oliver at the time. 
She was a dancer, a singer at one of the clubs that competed with Jack Ruby in Dallas, one of the strip clubs. She was quite trim. Regis Kennedy, the FBI man, she says that confiscated her film, was an agent based out of New Orleans. He wasn't even in Dallas. On the day that she claims he took the film, she picked somebody from the wrong city.